my name is Derek Legot. Yeah, but anyway, then from from there, from Nick, from finishing my tour in Cyprus, I then came home and I went to Germany, BAOR, where we were on perpetual exercise. I went to first of all to Krefeld, which is just near Dusseldorf, and we were continually on exercise. What does that involve? What? On exercise. Well, playing at war. Literally playing at war. You go out playing war games. You go out and practicing movement and, as far as we were concerned, setting up defensive sites and, and what have you. Uh, we we had uh, mobile communication centres, which would be a prime target of the Russian special forces had they invaded. And the idea would be to put out all the communication centres. And I said we were advised we would have been a prime target. So we were practicing evading that. And that's what the exercises were about. Uh, then from Crayfell I got posted down detached. I went down and I was attached to the Royal Artillery in Dortmund who had nuclear missiles. This I can tell you because it's common knowledge now. We had the corporal missiles which had nuclear warheads which were controlled by the Americans and because of that we had an American detachment permanently in the camp with us so they, they used to control the nuclear warheads and whilst I was where, down there with them so the Cuban Missile Crisis erupted and people, a lot of people don't know just how close we were then to the Third World War because John F. Kennedy, the American president, warned Khrushchev that if he didn't get his missiles out of Cuba within 24 hours, the United States and its allies would be at war with Russia. And it was only a matter of hours until Khrushchev eventually backed down and pulled his missiles out of Cuba. And the regiment I was with, 4-7 Guided Weapons Regiment, Royal Artillery, um, that was on full standby. In fact, it was actually scrambled and deployed out in the field with its missiles up and fully armed, pointed where I don't know. We weren't privy to that information. We just did the real link communications for them. That was in Germany, still. So. Sorry? That was in Germany, still. So. That was in Germany, yeah, right yeah. in the middle, right on the edge of the old East Germany, near a place called Braunschweig, which we call Brunswick. But it was actually, it should be known as Braunschweig, and that's where we were deployed to with the missiles up and fully armed. And we were fully armed as well with our small arms. I personally carried a Sterling submachine gun, and we were fully armed uh, with live ammunition at that time. Then it blew over and we stood down. How did it feel before that? What? Before it blew over for you it personally? Was, we were scared. We were very, very apprehensive because just only a few hundred yards from us was the the um, East Germans who were part of the um, the uh, Russian bloc. The uh, what do they call it now? The my memory going a bit now. The What's that? Uh, well, it's the Soviet bloc countries. But uh, they had a special name, but I can't remember what it was. Yeah, we were, we were a bit apprehensive on that one until, it, until they stood it down and Khrushchev took his missiles out of Germany. So in Germany, in BAOR, British Army of the Rhine, we did play it for real. Absolutely for real. And I did four years then in Germany, uh, mainly in, with, the, with the Royal Artillery in Dortmund. And then I went back to Krefeld, which is a static communications centre where we communicated with the whole of the British Commonwealth. We had direct links to Canberra, to Ottawa, to uh, London, and up Cyprus, all over the, whatever British, com you know, British forces were. It's called the Communications, Commonwealth Communications Army Network, which is no longer in existence. You have these satellites and all that kind of stuff now. In those days, we had the steam radio and, uh, and teleprinters and things like that. So what was life like in Germany for you? It was very good, by and large, yeah. Once that Cuban missile blew over, it was, it was wonderful. We got pretty good local overseas allowance again. We got, <laughs> once again, cheap cigarettes and cheap booze and things like that. 
and I, I personally got to love Germany as a country, as a place to be. And um, well, I just loved it, and I was there for over four years, nearly five years on that second time. And I say I was in um, several parts of Germany, mainly in the north, Krefeld, Essen, Duisburg and Dortmund, then back to Krefeld again. And then from there I went off to the Far East. <laughs>